a model steam engine test plant. Welcome to part one. I frequently bench test model steam engines for long periods using my air compressor, but I would prefer to use steam. I recently bought a model boiler which is 6 inches in diameter and about 12 inches long with a high water capacity. This is how I built it into a boiler plant with a hand pump, water tank and condenser. This boiler was made by a company called Pendle Steam Boilers. The web address is on screen at the moment. I originally bought it with a Stuart No. 9 engine that the owner originally wanted me to build into a steam plant. But somehow, to my eye, it didn't look right with the Stuart No. 9. The thing about this boiler is, not only is it well made and very solid, it is a twin flue water tube boiler, which means it doesn't have fire tubes, these tubes are full of water. Most of the boiler is actually water, which is perfect for the job. Because the tubes radiate, as you see here, it doesn't cause problems when I light the twin burners, they light beautifully. Some other twin flue designs like this, with cross tubes, have a lot of air in the flue. So when you light the burners, they light with a bang. The burners on this boiler light in a much more subdued manner. I've tried the boiler on compressed air and I didn't like the noise that the safety valve made, so I've changed it for a pop type one from Jubilee Fittings. This makes a quick noise when it opens and another quick noise when it shuts. Whereas the original safety valve that was fitted made a noise all the time when it was blowing off, like the Stuart ones do. You'll see the pop type safety valve in action once I've completed the plant and start to steam it. This is my Bambi BB50D compressor that's in my smaller workshop. It has two compressor units mounted on top of the tank, and taking that into consideration, it is fairly quiet. Not exactly silent, but quiet. Why did I buy a double compressor? Surely that's going to be twice as loud as the previous one? Not necessarily so. The air tank has a capacity of 50 litres, so once the compressor's pumped up to full pressure, which is 8 bar, I can switch it off, and it takes quite a while to exhaust 50 litres for running small steam engines. This unit is not designed for constant running. The units do overheat if you run them for prolonged periods. You've got to give it a rest which is often inconvenient, and it always seems to switch in and out at the wrong time when I'm making a video. And that is why I'm going to build a steam boiler plant. I know there are problems with the exhaust steam, but I've thought about that. I can pipe it out of the window in the workshop. Planning the layout of the boiler plant, this is vitally important. I've had this baseboard kicking about in the workshop for ages. It's badly scratched and needs rubbing down. I've never used it because it's been too big for some jobs and too small for others. But at last, it's perfect for this installation. I've placed the hand pump at the side of the boiler next to the check valve inlet. The boiler bushes on this boiler are threaded quarter by 40 threads per inch, which in my opinion is a bit too small. I'm going to make an adapter so I can connect it to the pump, which is designed to use 5 16 unions. On the boiler back head, there is a blanking plug where the check valve should fit. I'm going to remove this, and in its place I will fit an adapter, so I can use a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch check valve. The adapter is not going to be as simple as it looks. It needs to be square, and the check valve needs to stick out of the side of it, because the boiler bush is really quite close to the burner, and it's okay for a quarter by 40 check valve, but a 5 16 by 32 check valve will be a bit on the big side. A parcel arrived the other day, here it is on the bench. It's quite a large box for what's inside it, but it's a good idea to have a larger box because it's less likely to get lost than a very small box. I carefully cut the parcel tape using a Stanley knife, and inside it is a lot of newspaper. As I dig into the newspaper, I find another package, is this past the parcel. It contains a brand new pressure gauge for the boiler, because the two one-inch pressure gauges that I already have are not right, so I'm starting again with a brand new one. Here's the usual procedure. Always use two spanners when fitting pressure gauges. In this case, I'm removing a pressure gauge, but that still applies for removal also. 
This is a very simple job. I just fit the new pressure gauge and all is well. It's very important with steam boilers, irrespective of the size, to make sure that the pressure gauge reads accurately. Here's the story so far. The boiler is sat in the middle of this wooden plinth that I have. Scale is not as important with this boiler as it would be if it was in a boat or part of a steam engine installation. Here I'm trying permutations of different pipe sizes to find out which is going to be best for the water tank and the condenser. I think this is going to be the condenser and this smaller one is the water reservoir. I can top that up whenever I want. Once again, because I'm building this plant to run miniature steam engines for quite a long period and I don't want to have to keep emptying the condenser all the time, this is a big condenser so it should take a fair while before it gets full and needs draining. It's just one less thing to have to think about. The problem with steam engines, large and small, is they need constant attention. You can't just leave them doing what they do. You always have to keep an eye on the water level. Because the boiler's gas-fired, if you get into trouble, you can just turn the gas off. If it's coal-fired, it's an entirely different thing. If the water runs low, the boiler can be damaged, and even worse, it could explode. The twin burners should provide plenty of heat to generate steam. It has a high water capacity, and it's perfect for what I want. It's time to take the boiler off the very crudely made brass base. It was made by the original owner from whom I bought the boiler. I'm going to modify this base and tidy it up, but first I need to remove the bolts that hold the two pieces of boiler banding in place. That will allow me to lift the boiler off the base so I can give the base some attention. Here we go. There are some slight marks underneath the boiler. I'll wipe these over with some polyurethane varnish. In this clip, I'm removing the boiler bands from the other side, and now I end up with the mounting base. It's okay, really. It's a little bit crude, and the cross members are not strong enough. I'm just going to modify it, because then I'll know it's going to be solid and it won't move around. I'll take the part up to the main workshop to do this. Here's a shot of the kit of parts to make the boiler plant. This clip was filmed in the kitchen where the light's not so good. These are what I'm taking up to the workshop. Also at the moment there's a very nice steam plant on my kitchen table. I'm getting this ready to ship to the USA. I just need to wire the lights, run the plant, then dismantle the plant so I can show the owner how it goes together. But that won't be in this series. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.